Good morning and welcome back to Margin. This morning, we're going to talk about what is essential to your budget. So let's jump right into it. So in the last episode, we covered a sample of seven essential areas to prioritize around your finances and, and placing that focus around what is essential to you. So looking over the essentials you've outlined by category, the next step to jump into is to build a budget and or a plan to spend for these categories. Now, the purpose of a budget is to tell your money what your specific priorities are versus wondering what your money was actually spent on after the fact. So it's being more proactive than reactive. Now, I know that I put a lot of focus on the defense side of the equation. Uh, and, and I think this is mainly because you want to make sure that you have a system or a process for managing your money in place. Uh, and this is due to the ability to then have a solid footing or a foundation to work up from, to build up from, from that point. So you and I probably know far too many people who have made a great income, but have really nothing to show for it. So, so not only is a budget in and of itself essential, but it's essential to look at the specific categories and budget based upon what really matters most to you. Now, whether you decide to utilize a, a service or a product like YNAB, uh, you need a budget or every dollar or maybe personal capital, some of which I've outlined in previous episodes, uh, these help you to track your budget. Uh, but I know plenty of people who use a Excel sheet or they use a Google sheet. The most important part is that you actually make it a priority to have a budget, to have some parameters put in place um, so that you're not unknowingly stepping out of those parameters uh, and, uh, and going and living beyond your means. So within your budget, look at establishing categories. Uh, for most people, you can build categories in, and uh, and for many people, they're they're pretty consistent. Now, in an article by Every Dollar, uh, they outlined eleven categories, uh, and so I want to go through those as a as a reminder today to to help you build in those categories that will help you to be able to structure and build upon. Now, step one is to insert net pay to your bank as income. Now, income sources can be a W-2 uh, income source, like a nine to five. It could be a 1099 or a side hustle, maybe something that's seasonal or some other stream of income that may be passive of, you know, of, of one kind or another, uh, whether it be a retirement or social security or maybe an income property. But making sure that you take step one and putting that top line uh, income figure to which everything else would be deducted from. Now, step two is inserting a, a figure for giving. Now, uh, typically this is recommended at 10% and this is 10% of that, uh, either that net figure that we put as the first line, or you can also make it 10% of your gross income. So one is, you know, gross of course is uh, what you're being paid before you pay out taxes uh, and any other aspects that come out of your income, uh, or net is what you receive after all those aspects have been taken out. So, uh, so basing it off of that will give you a good starting point. Now, I always encourage people to make a priority of giving, whether that be uh, a, a cause, maybe a mission, maybe a ministry or a family in need, but making sure that you make a priority of giving so that you are putting your priorities in the right place to prioritize, um, you know, not just yourself, which is easy for each of us to do, but also prioritizing the needs of, of those around you and the organizations around you that, that uh, go out into the community and reach out and, and make a difference. Now, step number three is inserting a savings figure of 10% of that first figure of that income figure. Now, intentionally putting money towards a savings goal should be a priority and building up a basic savings goal of maybe 500, 1,000, then 2,500 for a rainy day fund leading up to six months of living expenses 
will ensure that you are building in some uh, level of barrier between you and life. Now, step number four is inserting a mortgage or rent amount. Now, this is widely controversial in regards to what that figure should be. Um, but in this article in particular, uh, they recommended 25% of your take home pay. Now, house housing is like I said, widely controversial uh, in, in what percentage of gross versus net and, and figuring out what that should be uh, that's going towards your rent or your mortgage payment. Now, finding the figure that makes sense for you based upon the lifestyle that you wanna live uh, will help you define this and making sure that you don't sign on for a mortgage that is uh, is too much and you end up being house poor because you have too large of a rent or a mortgage payment. Now, step number five is inserting utilities. Now, utilities, you may want to put a figure of 5% under uh, that category. Now, you Utilities can vary quite a bit based on the efficiency of your home, efficiency of your appliances, as well as how much time you spend there and uh, and and how large your family is and so on and so forth. So that's a figure you want to have a starting point, but you'll need to prioritize uh, how much you are spending in what areas uh, you know within your plan to spend. Now, step number six is transportation costs. Now, this is recommended at 10% of your net income figure. Now with the average monthly payment on a new car pushing $600 a month, the increasing cost of fuel as well as um, as the inflationary components of, of uh, the cost of owning a vehicle uh, or at least transportation otherwise, it's important for you to not set it and forget it, but to set a priority uh, in regards to your transportation and how much you want to spend. Uh, for this specific you know, category. So some people may be okay riding a bike and their transportation costs will be much less than that figure. Well, meanwhile, others may have three vehicles and need to maintain those vehicles. Uh, and so you wanna factor in the appropriate percentage based on your needs and your wants, the essentials in your life. Now, step number seven is insert food costs at 10% of the first figure of your net income. Now, this is a baseline percentage to be aware of, but look at the essentials for your diet, for your lifestyle and your social agenda. Making sure to properly budget in this area will be important as far, far too many people uh, end up not necessarily budgeting or planning for their food expenses. They just see it all as essential and uh, and they have no idea what they spend. Now, step number eight looks at inserting a amount for personal expenses at 5% of your net income. It's important to have a category for your personal expenses that include maybe a haircut uh, or maybe a subscription of some kind. This way, those semi-regular or even regular expenses have a place to be seen within a category that then you can make adjustments based on the level of priority you have in spending for that specific area. Now, step number nine is focusing in on miscellaneous expenses. Now, everyone needs to have miscellaneous expenses because there needs to be some kind of catch all. And so with that, it's recommended at 5%. Now this would be a category for those Amazon purchases, the runs to the local pharmacy, and ensures that those expenses don't artificially increase your food expenses as they oftentimes are paired with uh, grocery runs or running to Target or Walmart. Now, step number 10 looks at inserting uh, recreational expenses at 5% of that first figure. Now, this category in particular covers maybe date nights, going to the movies, going to a concert or something like that, and making sure that you are not focusing so much on just making a living, that you're not making a life, that you're not feeding your lifestyle and the lifestyle you've chosen. Now, step number 11, don't have enough fingers for that one, but uh, that is for insurance, uh, insurance expenses. Now, this one can uh, vary widely based on your level of coverages, but typically this is recommended at 15% and covers areas like health insurance, life insurance, disability, uh, and, and, and all those other 
aspects that could fall into this category. Now, giving yourself a figure as a starting point will help you determine what you spend in this area and if anything needs to be adjusted within your insurance. So oftentimes people sign up for these policies that are multiple hundreds of dollars per month, not realizing the overall effect on their uh, their plan to spend their budget and, and operating within their means. Now these categories add up to 100%, which prevents you from first and foremost, living above your means. Second of all, it has a means of, of forcing savings, not only from the top end because you're budgeting off of uh, your net income after your retirement savings and whatnot have been factored in, but also you're putting savings away for a rainy day fund or other purposes. And so it's forcing in that habit. Now, the last thing that this really helps with is making sure that you don't have just a slush fund. And it's so easy for all of us to have you know, just a, you know, a smaller, you know, outline of like, okay, well, I spend X amount in transportation and housing and food and just kind of not really focus on all the ancillary costs that actually can add up very quickly. And so you want to make sure that you don't just have this large slush fund and that you're actually breaking it down into the categories that, uh, that most likely will impact your life and, uh, and making a priority in those areas that are essential to you. Now, once you've looked at uh, these 11 steps to developing a budget and immediately factoring in your specific essentials uh, within each of those categories, you'll then be able to see what the categories are that you place the greatest focus or importance on. Now, this will ensure uh, that the money that flows through your hands goes actually to the right places based on what's really most important to you. Now, my call to action today is to take the time to go through this process of budgeting that that you know word that uh, seems like so many people run from that is taboo of sorts, but actually spending time to uh, to look at these recommended percentages then figure out what your percentages are going to be based on the level of priority you put for each category. Now, this will set you up to align your budget, your personal finances, your resources with what is actually essential to you. If this information is helpful to you, please do like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you're reminded to come back on a daily basis and improve in managing your personal finances. Thank you for your time. Enjoy your day. We'll see you back here tomorrow.